Hello everybody, my name is MegazRNX, and today, oh my goodness, yesterday Nintendo dropped their Nindy showcase, showcasing the latest and newest in, in new and developing indie games, and I think for the most part, they really caught a lot of people off guard. I think a lot of people were sleeping on this, and they should have been woke for this presentation because we had some amazing games drop from Cuphead to... Um, Blaster Master Zero Two to a crazy new, never thought of Nintendo IPs up in a new game called Cadence of Hyrule. But today I'm going to talk about some of these games that caught my eyes for the most part, and I'm just going to give my overall thoughts, discussion, impressions on all the stuff that was showcased within the Nindy Showcase. So right off the bat, the Nindy Showcase started off with Cuphead being revealed. And at first, I was just looking at that old cartoony way how they were showing how the dude was pouring milk up in the cup. And instantly, I should have just thought about that being Cuphead. You, you know, they had the cup literally right in front of you. And they were throwing all of the, the switching. Um, they were throwing all of the... They were teasing the switch, you know, throughout the whole entire thing. How many times, if you go back and count how many times it says the word switch up in there, though. But right off the bat, they opened up with Cuphead. And they said, thanks to our friends over at Microsoft and I'm like okay Cuphead coming to the switch was rumored for quite some time and it actually came to um, fruition and I'm like wow what a time to be alive to think that we could actually have Microsoft games actually coming on our Nintendo system and now that we basically know that this partnership is actually happening there was actually more news followed up later right after the release of this saying that more games will have the Xbox Live um, integration in it, and Xbox Live will be coming to Cuphead at a future later date beyond its original release date of April the 18th. And man, that's getting a lot of people starting to think like, what else could we potentially get to the Switch that's other than Cuphead? And I'm personally, for me, I'm pretty sure I feel like Ori is going to probably be revealed around E3-ish time. That's what I'm kind of banking on, as well as the Blind Force. I think those are two other good candidates that are Microsoft games that could potentially come over to the Switch at some point. And Cuphead is available right now for you to be able to pre-purchase and pre-download it. And if you ever checked out my Twitter account, I already shared it. I was like, immediately once this reveal was done with, I went ahead and downloaded this sucker. So... I'm very excited that Cuphead is coming, and I heard that it's a very difficult kind of platformer, but overall, I'm just very excited to actually be able to play one of these games that was very well known, the fan base really enjoyed it, and I'm just looking to having a good time at it, and hopefully I don't break any controllers on the side, so <laughs> there's that. And next, I wanted to talk about Katana Zero. Now, Katana Zero, from the way that they showed it, it just looked like a game that was this very high pace, you know, your traditional kind of platformer just moving around. And I liked how they had that slowdown effect where you can slice the, the bullets. And the whole concept about this is you basically got to take out everybody and you kind of assign like these hit missions. And you have to take out everybody and leave no person alive. And the thing, the odds are kind of stacked up against you where, you know, one person shoots you, you're dead. And thankfully, they have like a rewind feature where you're able to kind of rewind it back and actually, you know, check and see how like you did on the level and then basically restart it. So it looks like it's going to be a game that kind of provides a good little challenge. But at the same time, it kind of has a unique twist to it with the whole slowdown feature and how fast paced it is to where I think it really is kind of a unique indie game in itself. So Katana Zero is just one of those ones I'm just going to have to also keep my eye out on, but it, it potentially caught my interest. And next, I wanted to talk about Blaster Master Zero Two. Now, this one was a shadow drop, and it actually was released yesterday after the end of the the Nindy Showcase. And this game looks extremely well polished and really clean. Now, the original Blaster Master Zero was also on the Switch, and it was near around the time that the Switch actually released. So way back in 2017. And if you wanted to check out the Blaster Master Zero series or just Blaster Master in general, it originally originated on the NES. 
And if you actually have a Nintendo Switch Online subscription, you can actually check out Blaster Master. It was actually released on the, the NES uh, online game. So you can actually check it out and see if this is potentially kind of a series for you. And then you can also go back in to check Blaster Master Zero, the first one. It actually has a demo itself. And I remember checking that one out. And it was during the time that I wasn't really having a good, keen eye on upcoming indie games that we're releasing but there is a demo for that so you can check out that first original demo see if it's something for you and both blaster master zero the first one as well as blaster master zero two that released yesterday they're both ten dollars a pop so you can get the whole thing the whole series for the zero series for twenty dollars and it's something i'm going to have to go back up and check on because the way how that one looked it looks really good and really clean and I'm just thinking well I might have to give this one a second look at because it looks really good and something else I also want to note and I want to give a little um, potential shout out to an older game that they made NT Creates is a studio that actually creates the the Blaster Master Zero series and they also created a game that's called Azure Striker Gun Vault Striker Pack and I'm about to pull up here a quick little summary for it but Azure Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack brings the electrifying 2D side-scrolling action game Azure Striker Gunvolt and Azure Striker Gunvolt 2, which previously made their home on the Nintendo 3DS onto the Nintendo Switch in one single package. In Azure Striker Gunvolt, you take control of Gunvolt's high-speed mobility and repertoire of electrical attacks to make short work of your enemies. As an adept who possesses supernatural and septimal powers, Gunvolt fights for the freedom of the nation from the tyrannical rule of the massive conglomerate known as the Summeragai Summeragai mm, group and the invasion of a super powerful group known as Adepts known as Eden. And I actually came across this game by looking on the eShop whenever I was checking out Blaster Master Zero 2. And you know, anytime you're checking out a game on the Nintendo eShop, you can check up in the top left corner and it actually will show the, the developer or the studio of whoever made that game and any other games they actually made. And I actually ran across this one. And overall, I was actually impressed the way how Indie, NT creates. I was just kind of going through all the games they really made. And every single one of the games actually looks very polished and something I could probably potentially go up into. And this one's a little bit different. It's 40 bucks, but it's probably because it has two games at once. So maybe it was ideally like 20 bucks a pop for both the games that actually come within this pack. But overall, I'm really thinking about I potentially will pick this one up as well. But maybe not right now because I have a lot of games that are potentially about to come out in March and April with the... Uh, with the Final Fantasy 7 dropping in March and then Final Fantasy 10 and Slash 10 2, along with Cuphead dropping out in April. So maybe I'll save this game for a time period when there's not many games coming out for the Switch that I'm personally gonna get. So maybe sometime around September or October-ish. But overall, I was actually impressed by this game. And while it's only and while it's actually 40 bucks, it's on the higher end, it does look really good and actually reminds me of a little bit of the Mega Man series or specifically the Mega Man X series if you ever um, ran across or actually played that game series. So I so if you ever played that series, I will highly recommend probably trying out this game. And I heard nothing but really good games. Really good games from the games that they actually develop. And overall, I'm just really impressed with the games that they actually drop out. And next, I wanted to talk about the big one, Cadence of Hyrule. Now, this one came completely out of left field. I was thinking at first, I was like, oh, okay, all right. I was like, what is this game? I was like, just hopping around. I was like, I kind of would have preferred Fluid Motion, but then I figured out that it was um, a, it was from the same creators from Crypt of the Necrodancer. So I was like, oh, okay, this is a rhythm-based game. All right, I'm sort of feeling it now. And then all of a sudden, I hear this... Legend of Zelda music that's coming out of nowhere and I'm like all right I know this game already looks in the style and it's kind of copying like a link to the past in a sort of kind of way it's just kind of building off that nostalgia um Legend of Zelda but I was like I was like this is kind of pushing it a little too far because the music sounds a little bit too familiar and then all of a sudden Link and Zelda pop out of the thing 
out of the shadows and they revealed themselves and they said, hey, these are playable characters. I was like, what in the world? I was like, what kind of timeline we're living in where any games you now actually have Nintendo IPs in them with their games. And I'm like, man, what a time to be alive right now. Because I'm like, Link has almost been up in everything from Skyrim to Hyrule Warriors to to Diablo 3 with that representation up in there. I mean, good gracious, the representation for Legend of Zelda is all over the place. But no matter the fact that we can get Legend of Zelda IPs up in Cadence of Hyrule and into potential any other indie games, just makes me think like, hmm, what else could we get? Could we get an F-Zero representation within like a fast RMX um, new indie game? I mean, the the, pot the possibilities are basically end endless from this. So overall, I was completely shocked about that. And that's a game I'm really going to keep my eye out on because I'm probably going to potentially get that as well. So overall, I was just very impressed by all the games that they actually showcase within this indie showcase. And they said it was supposed to be 30 minutes long, although it was actually approximately about 25 minutes long. I won't hold them against that because they did show quite a bit of stuff. And I liked how they were able to actually bring some of the developers on to actually talk about their games. And I think they have a really good flow and rhythm for these Nindy showcases and how they're actually presenting and showcasing off these new games. Whether it's something that's coming down later down the road, later like later down the road, like a month from now, you know, towards the end of the year, as well as um, just dropping some shadow drops that are um, available right after the director show. And basically, from the stuff that was shared with Cuphead, with the Microsoft branded deal, to Nintendo's IPs being in there um, into an indie game, you basically cannot skip these indie Nindy showcases because they're almost at a point where now they could almost just about be as important as your traditional Nintendo Directs. So I think a lot of people may have been sleeping out on this though, but this is an eye opener because indie games are really going somewhere. And I remember there was a time that I used to not play a lot of indie games because I was just more focused on my AAA games and my third parties and everything else. But now I'm slowly noticing, you know, my indie game kind of expanding out a little bit because my first one I started off with was Undertale. And then obviously when Deltarune was dropped and it's free for now, but the future chapters are actually going to be going to cost stuff. I actually started getting into that. Also, thanks to game sharing, I'm able to check out certain games like potentially Hollow Knight from one of my friends. And now I'm about to check out Cuphead and potentially about to check out Cadence of Hyrule. So I'm, I'm just slowly kind of getting into this indie game series. And overall, I'm just very impressed with how Nintendo handled this as well as all of the indie developers and everything else they showcased. And there was a lot of other games I wasn't able to touch upon, though, but you can just go through the direct. And there's a lot of good ones, and I think there's a genre out there for everybody. For whatever genre that you really like, there is an indie game out there for you that can cater to your needs. Unfortunately, no Goose Game. I know a lot of people wanted that, but that's coming out later this year. It's been delayed, but it will eventually come. But overall, I'm just very impressed with Nintendo and everything they showcased today. So that is all I have to talk about for today with um with nintendo's nindy showcase that was revealed yesterday so make sure you subscribe and let me know down in the comments what you actually thought about the nindy games and what else we could potentially see in the um in the future in terms of microsoft's collaboration with nintendo and any other nindy games that you may think are potentially coming or things that you may have previously heard about so just let me know all down in the comment section what you actually thought about that as well as nindy's um showcase as a whole and I'll talk to y'all later in whatever video I make next. See ya.